Hi, everybody, on a classic Valley Fog Tuesday morning coming to you from KGWTV in downtown Portland. I'm meteorologist Rod Hill. Uh, the fog really ought to clear today. I'm not going to spend really time talking about that, but if you look at imagery, it's what, uh, coming up on 1040 in the morning on this Tuesday. It's a really narrow ribbon of fog right over the center core of the valley, like right over I-5. You get up in elevation at all, and we're seeing clearing, and we're starting to see it go. So I think it'll be a beautiful, sunny afternoon. I'm going to spend almost all this video talking about this incoming one-two punch of a cold front on uh, Friday and another one on Saturday. This is not the biggest storm of, of, of storms. It's not the storm of all storms, but it still looks to be the wettest fall storm of the season so far and still looks to be the coldest storm of the season so far with the first potential of significant snow impacting travel at pass level over the Cascades before we get out of the weekend, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Uh, this is the same image I showed you the other day. And I like it because it does show the first front coming in Friday, the second one back here coming in Saturday in terms of these uh, the secondary low that's going to punch in on Saturday and make this basically a two-day occasional heavy rain event. What I'm going to update and get into more detail specifically, and I'll show you this graphic big coming up here in a moment, is the Mount Hood snow level, what we'll call our travel update, what I want you to know and be prepared for this weekend if you are traveling up over the high country. Okay, so all of that is coming up. Now, I think... Can I get this into, uh, well, we just showed you that. All right, this is what I want to show you. I just, this is just simply show and tell. This is so pretty. I look at these live cameras every day, some of them on my network, some of them on KGW's network. This is the Shehalem tasting room camera out in Sherwood. Uh, and while Portland and Salem and Vancouver were locked in fog, this was the view from the tasting room vineyard out there. I just thought it was such a pretty picture I wanted to share with you. That's Mount Hood. That's some shallow fog laying down. That's the clear skies up top. So, so pretty indeed. Okay. So all of this brought to you by, as it always is, I need to figure out a way to get around what's slowing me up here. And for that... I apologize, and maybe I'm not going to do it. Okay, this way I can do it. Here's the Momentous Wealth Podcast. This is my sponsor. Listen on Apple Podcasts, listen on Spotify for a variety of investment topics meant to educate you, brought to you by Momentous Wealth Management. They're basically a retirement investing planning company licensed in Oregon and Washington. I use them, have used them for like 20 years. The guy that is the CEO and founder, Todd Pasarchek, uh of this firm. All right, I promised you this. So this is the updated Mount Hood snow level looking this weekend. Obviously, it's Tuesday. Obviously, things could change. This is courtesy of Hillcrest uh, Ski and Board Shop for your winter needs. They are sponsoring my Mount Hood uh, ski forecast page for another year. Very happy about that. Located out in Gresham on the way to the mountain, basically. So Friday, pretty good confidence that as this first front comes in, it's all rain up through Timberline Lodge, 7,000 foot snow level. And then we jump to Saturday. So Saturday could start off at about 4,500 feet in the morning, lower to 3,500 feet during the day. So the snow level is going to be right there at about 4,000 feet. So this time of the year, October, I'm kind of starting to make the assumption that past level temperatures during the day on Saturday will actually be a handful of degrees above freezing, like maybe even 40 degrees at government camp. So that would be maybe snow in the air, but nothing sticking and traveling really wouldn't be that big of a deal. Later in the day going into Saturday evening, maybe we start to get some sticking snow over the passes. So again, check conditions before you go, but realize much of Saturday, maybe all of Saturday is fine. Um, but there is the chance that snow could be sticking later in the day. It's really now Saturday overnight and Sunday day that I think snow levels could be down to 3,000 feet, which is what this shows. And I'm, I'm projecting on the high end a possibility, I think. Four to six inches of snow sticking over the pass, uh, Cascade Passes Saturday overnight during the day Sunday into Sunday evening. Now, keep in mind, Sunday for the valley will be showery, scattered precip. The main... Heavy rain event for the coast and the valley is Friday, Saturday. But those showers could still be producing double the moisture up in the Cascades Sunday than we will see here in the valley. So we'll see. Monday is kind of a gap day. I'm not sure if there's enough precipitation to produce any 
um, accumulating snow up in the Cascades on Monday or not. And then by Tuesday, we get a little warm surge, and that's actually rain back up through the Cascade Passes and back up to about 5,500 feet. So it's Tuesday. This is likely going to be changing, but that is your update for now. All right. I don't show you this very often. This is the tabular data from the American GFS model. This used to be online for free. Um, the company that did that now charges for it. So I don't think you can find this online Googling around uh, without a, a past credentials, but, but here it is. Um, and basically this doesn't give us a high percentage chance of measurable rainfall until we get into Friday morning. So if this is correct, this means at eight o'clock Friday morning in Portland, it would just be starting to precept and there wouldn't really be anything measurable. But look how the amounts get heavier. We get, uh, here we go to a, a three hour period of 14 one hundredths of an inch and then 28 one hundredths of an inch. This gives us through late evening, 63 one hundredths of an inch of moisture in Portland. Again, this may be too high, maybe it's not. It shows that even going into the evening, the snow level is about 6,000 feet or maybe a little bit higher. Then it shows moisture continues. There's a second push of some heavier moisture coming in late Saturday morning into the afternoon. And then by Saturday late day, like by five o'clock Saturday, the snow level is down to about 4,000 feet. And then the snow level is down to 3,000 feet overnight and all of Sunday. And here's measurable rainfall continuing Sunday. This may be overdone on Sunday. We'll see. There's a bit of a Monday break right here. This is Tuesday. There's 210, 25, maybe three tenths of an inch of rain on Tuesday with snow levels starting off. Yeah, snow levels Tuesday generally holding somewhere between about, um, I would say, near 5,000 feet to me. Well, about 5,000 feet, that looks to be. And then there's more rain moisture potentially coming on Wednesday and Thursday of next week. And even a heavier rain system maybe on Friday, October 31st. This is Halloween. Halloween has been all over the board. It's been, when I look at the models, one day it's dry, one day it's wet. So this particular day, it's back to being wet. All right. One thing I did mention is the winds. So this is 850 millibar. This is 5,000 feet. Let's jump to Friday. Here's a potential gust of 5,000 feet, which could produce some gusts at the headlands along the coast, even though those are lower, uh, well up in the 40 plus mile per hour range Friday. Here's some gusty winds at the coast that could still be maybe 40 to even 60 mile per hour gusts Saturday afternoon. I think that's probably Saturday afternoon, more like a 40 to 50 mile per hour potential wind late Saturday, Saturday evening along the coast at the headlands. Could be some 50 mile per hour wind gusts plus a pass level up in the Cascades. And then Sunday, those winds are more like west 15 to 25. But certainly this is still biting on the potential of some gusts between 40 and 50 at the coast this weekend, and maybe even higher than that up in the Cascades. So that's tabular data that I look at. It definitely drives home the fact that we're going to be pretty active. Again, not the storm of all storms, but maybe the windiest and the wettest of anything we've seen so far this fall. Now, right here on the satellite picture, this is a band of clouds right here that will be coming into our skies on tomorrow, Wednesday. This system will weaken significantly, and I'll show you in a moment. This is the one that just weakens to maybe we get a, a quick hit of some passing showers tomorrow afternoon on Wednesday. Maybe we don't. Thursday could be a dry day, and then the main system that comes in on Friday is back here starting to come together along the uh, southern edge of the Aleutian Island chain of Alaska. Okay. Here is what the National Blended Model Future Radar product shows for a weak rain chance coming in Wednesday afternoon. This is 1 p.m. Wednesday. It shows some rain around Long Beach and Astoria. And then as I play this into 5 p.m., notice how everything breaks up and there's rain up in northern Washington, but just the chance of a broken area of light showers that may or may not be measurable in Portland. And even if this comes in, it would literally be one hour with some passing rain late tomorrow in the valley into early evening, which means most of your Wednesday would be dry. And although I'm including a chance of moisture on Thursday, um, the weather models like Thursday staying dry and Thursday night staying dry. So we'll see. Here's the European model Thursday morning. This shows the chance of barely measurable rainfall. The chance, we may or may not get this much. This shows worst case, barely measurable from that Wednesday late day evening amount up to five one hundredths on the North Coast. And it's going to show you Thursday basically staying dry. Here comes that rain on Friday. Again, we could be dry at 7 o'clock Friday morning. 
Could be eight or nine before rain really starts to fall in Portland in the morning. That timing has been pushed back. Maybe it gets pushed back some more. We'll see. But once we get to Friday into Friday evening, look at what's happened. This shows six tenths of an inch in Portland. Same up in Seattle. Shows an inch of rain in Tillamook. Otherwise, a half to three quarters of an inch at the coast. And absolutely widespread moisture. All of Western Washington, all of Western Oregon. Now, on Friday alone, not much getting over the Cascades. But by the time we wake up Saturday morning, now the moisture has pushed all the way to the Idaho border, all the way out into the blues. There's um, 62 one hundredths of an inch in Deschutes County. Here is, again, good rainfall up and down the entire area. Now, again, this is an accumulative map. So if I play this into Sunday morning, this is going to show you the bulk of the two-day rain event, Friday and Saturday. And it shows it could be over two inches of rain along the coast. There's Tillamook, 2.31. There's North Bend, 2.56. Two and three quarters up north of Long Beach in Washington. It shows over an inch of rain in Seattle. It shows an inch and a half in Portland. Nearly an inch and a half of rain down in Lane County. 1.66 down farther south into uh, Oregon. Shows, you know, 35 one-hundredths to a half of an inch of rain out over the blues. So again, not the storm of all storms, but it would be the wettest and the windiest overall of anything we've seen so far this fall. I really like the wind animation. This may be overdone, but it's really good information. This is from the European model. This is Friday morning. That first front is approaching. In green, these are 40 mile per hour wind gusts approaching the Oregon coast, okay? Notice a little bump of maybe winds getting closer to 50 offshore. This would be mid-morning Friday. Winds southwest to 20 in Portland and up into Seattle. Here is, uh, this would be, this would be what? Um, this would be nearing the noon hour on Friday, late morning. 50 to even 60 mile per hour winds near to offshore from Oregon. And it does show the potential of 30 to 40 mile per hour gu a gust in green in parts of the Lama Valley. So again, not the storm of all storms, but the wettest and the rainiest of anything we've seen this fall. That's my theme. Here we are later in the day, Friday, going into Friday night. Now we're down to 10, 20 mile per hour breezes. Everything's still coming in from the West. Now here's that second punch of activity coming in Saturday. Here we are Saturday late morning. 40 mile per hour winds along the coast, 50 mile per hour winds holding out to sea, 30 mile per hour wind gusts in the valley and out into the gorge from the West. Here's Saturday afternoon. Now the main wind threat is over, except for some noticeable gusts up into Washington. But we're back down to like 10 to 20 mile per hour winds late Saturday and going into the day Sunday. Here's Sunday morning. Now we're 10 to 15 and even lighter with just scattered showers in the area on Sunday. So I thought that was a pretty vivid wind animation. Again, it's probably on the high ends. We'll see what we end up with and what we don't. All right, let's go around the horn real quick. Medford, 77 today. Wow, nice. Dry through Thursday, chance of rain picking up, and there's the rain in southern Oregon with temperatures in the 50s this weekend. Again, this is widespread moisture. Pelton's going to be dry Wednesday, going to be dry Thursday. Rain picks up Friday day, and then into Saturday. Again, this is widespread moisture moving into our state. Here's central Oregon. Been dry through Thursday, chance of rain picks up Friday day. There's the wet weekend and into Monday with temperatures cooling down into the 40s, perhaps for highs on Sunday. Up in Seattle. Better chance of some rain Wednesday, better chance of some rain Thursday, and then the main event absolutely coming in Friday, Saturday, and by Sunday, low temperature or high temperatures only about 52 degrees. Okay, here's our capital city in Oregon, Salem. Slight chance Wednesday, Thursday. I think there's at least a chance of rain Thursday, but again, the models like a staying dry, and then there's the rain picking up Friday into Saturday into Sunday, Monday. Okay, all right, so you see how widespread. All this moisture is. Rain likely on Thursday to hit the north coast. This would be the back half of the day and then the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Absolutely, your weekend is either going to see canceled outdoor plans or outdoor plans on Friday and Saturday that you're certainly going to be dressing for with your full rain gear on. Here's North Bend. I'll drive through Thursday and then the rain picking up even on the south coast. Okay. Uh, with all that said, let's get you to courtesy of Hazeldale Tire Pros on Highway 99 in Vancouver off of I-5, my seven-day forecast. I, I mean, it's still cloudy in downtown Portland. It's what? Coming up on 11 o'clock. So uh, will we see sun at noon? If we get sun by noon, we have a chance to get up to 66. Tomorrow, 
partly cloudy to increasing clouds, that kind of mid to late afternoon shower threat briefly, much of the day is dry. Thursday could just be mainly cloudy and dry, but I'm including a rain chance. If we get some rain, it would be traceable, probably. And then here we go. Early morning dry Friday, then comes the rain, then comes the winds into Saturday. Sunday's a scattered shower day. The wind in the valley's over, but could still be some decent snow up in the Cascades. Remember, with the snow level Sunday setting at about 3,000 feet, we talked about that. And then a brand new system bringing increasing rain into Monday afternoon. Obviously, I'm going to bring you more updates between now and Friday, but that's the latest at this time. I'm Rod Hill. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. It helps me out. You'll be notified when I post, and I will talk to you soon.